And let's say you have uh, this one right here, x plus y. And it doesn't matter what these terms are right now. But if you look at x plus y to the power of 3, okay, and this is, the, this is the key. Pascal's triangle will tell you what the coefficients will be, and actually they'll tell you what the entire terms will be uh, using Pascal's triangle. So this is 3, right, to the power of 3. And so what you do, this is the 1, 2, 3, this is the fourth row. 1, 2, 3, 4. So these coefficients are going to be the coefficients when you expand this binomial expansion. And how do you do that? You look at these numbers right here. So if it's to the power of 3, you start with 3 in your combination here. 3 choose 0. Then you do 3 choose 1. 3 choose 2. 3 choose 3. That's how you get the coefficients for the uh, for the, that particular row of Pascal's triangle. Okay. So whatever the whatever the end value is, that's what you start with with your um, combination formula. Okay. So again, I don't want you really to think about the rows here at all. That's sort of out. We're not even going to consider it. Here's another thing that you should notice that if you have something to the power of zero, it's always one, right? And so that's the top of the triangle. Okay. And if you have something to the power of 1, it's just itself. And that's why you have two terms here. Okay? So, all right. So write this down. <coughs> if n equals 2, we have three terms. Okay. The rule is n plus 1 total terms in the expansion. So whatever your n is, like I said, if it's 2, so that would be this right here, okay? Well, it's a little small for you guys to see there away in the back. But if this is a 2, we have 1, 2, 3 terms. Okay? Because that represents this row in Pascal's triangle. And again, if it's a 2 there, you start with 2, choose 0. That's your first coefficient. Then 2, choose 1, 2, choose 2. Okay? That's the first part. Pascal's triangle, how do you get the terms of Pascal's triangle using combinations? The second part, and again, remember, this is all shortcut stuff, right? The binomial theorem, this is how you get shortcuts to this, to some kind of monster expansion, right? And the shortcut, again, is, is this. This one's going to take a little bit more time, all right? But if we focus on, let's just, let me just take a quick snap here. So this is, this is very common. You know x plus y squared. You know what that is. We can do FOIL method, right? We've done this before. And you do first right, x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared. That is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And that's, that's what you get over here, OK? So what we've been doing the long way with simple ones, like to n equals you know, 2 and 3, the binomial theorem works for those simple ones as well. But let me tell you how to get these, uh, you know, not the numbers, but the actual you know, variables in that arrangement. Let's talk about that. So we would have, in this case, we have a 2 here. So we're going to have 2 choose 0. That's going to be our first coefficient that we're going to put there. The other thing is this. You look at the first term in the binomial, x, and this is, gets multiplied by, I'm going to use brackets here actually, by the first term to the power of n. The second term, right here, the y, gets multiplied to the power of 0. 
Okay. So <coughs> this is, I know it doesn't look like a shortcut right now to get x squared, but 2 choose 0 is 1. x squared is x squared. y to the 0 is 1. That simplifies to x squared. Then we're going to add the next coefficient in Pascal's triangle. 2 choose 1. And then we're going to start to repeat this pattern. You always have the two terms in the binomial. So x is going to go here, y is going to go here. Okay. And now this is what happens now. With these exponents, this one starts to go down. And this exponent starts to go up. Meaning that x was squared here. Now it's just to the power of 1. So it goes down by 1. And y goes up by 1. So this first exponent on the first term goes down each time. This one on the second term goes up. So this is plus 2 choose 1 is 2 times x times y. This is just 2xy. Everybody see that? And then finally here we have the next coefficient would be 2 choose 2. Again, we have our x and our y as the terms in the binomial. This keeps going down, so this is now at 0. This is at 2. That one goes up. So 2 choose 2 is 1. And x to the power of 0 is just 1 times y squared. A couple things I will note here is that these exponents, there, there, and there, they must always, always add up to n. In this case, n is 2. So 2 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 0 plus 2. So whatever the n is in the question, those little exponents there have to always add up to n. Okay. The actual formula for the binomial, binomial theorem, now I, I kind of wanted to ease into it because it, it looks a little bit ugly. If I gave it to you at the very beginning, you'd be like, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm right, never going to be able to understand this. It's not that hard. Now that I've gone through an example, but if you're asked to do x plus y to the power of 12, okay, this is how you do it. So the binomial theorem okay, it looks like this. If you have anything x plus y, let's say, to the power of n, how you work out that expansion is this n choose 0 is going to be your first kind of coefficient in there, times x to the n times y to the 0. That's always your first term. You're going to add to that n choose 1. And this is going to be x to the power of, now it's n minus 1, and this y value is 1. So this coefficient, or this exponent always comes down. Okay, I'll write one more here. And we got n choose 2. We have x to the power of n minus 2 now and y to the 2. Now plus, we're going to have a whole bunch of terms in between depending on how big n is. And then at the very end, okay, we're going to end up with, this is at the very end, we're going to end up with n choose n. So whatever n is, it's going to keep going up. It's going to be n choose n. And this first term is going to be to the power of 0. And then 
y is going to be to the power of n. That's where we're going to end up to. Okay, so that's a that's kind of the formula for the binomial theorem. Now I'm going to do a series of examples here, um, just sort of like I've done. We'll do a little bit of a tougher one. Okay, but that is the binomial theorem in a nutshell. And if we look back to this expansion right here, okay, this follows that format. See, it's n choose zero first, then n choose one, then we go all the way up to, and it happens to be this is the last term, n choose n. See that? Here's n, and then we subtract one, keep subtracting until this gets to zero. 